Welcome back to Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan. I've got a really fun flight planned out for you guys today. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me about this landslide here in Papua New Guinea, and I'm gonna hopefully find it today and fly by it to show you guys what it looks like, how big it is. I don't exactly even know what it is. I have an idea and it's directly on my track to where I'm going today. Looks like we've got a low layer of fog right here, but it looks like it's only, I don't know, 100, 150 feet high or so, so we could probably outclimb that easy. I'm gonna get ready and get out on an hour and 11 minute flight today. So here's my plan of action. I looked up online what the village is called. It's called Yumbali is where this village is. I have really no idea where it is. I just know it's in that province in the area that I'm going. So I looked it up on Google Maps and there it is, pretty close to Wabag. So if we look over here on my actual chart, I plotted out my route that I'm gonna be flying, kind of coming up here and then turning around a corner and the way I do that, or the reason why I do that, is because there's a bunch of mountains there. I'm gonna be flying down the valley. So if we zoom in, find Wabag, that's the easiest to find. And then this Sarunki is actually on my chart right here. So right around in this area is where I'm gonna be looking for this landslide. It's gonna be off the right. Now, if you're wondering, well, Ryan, why are you guys not involved in this relief, you know, operation stuff? Well, there's a road right there, guys. So. They have vehicles that are able, I think the landslide covered up the road, but they're still able to get vehicles there. So that's why aviation is not really needed. There's no airstrips that are really close there. It shows that there's one there, but it's probably closed many, many years ago because there's a road there now. So that is why we are not being utilized to help out with the relief of this. But I'm about ready to go. I need to still fuel up and then we're out of here. pounds of fuel I got round trip fuel today and we're gonna go I don't think I have this specific location in our database right now so I'm gonna go to one that's nearby it then put it in last pretty much the exact same route let's go ahead and get started fuels on low start no pressure coming in. NG stabilizing at 21. Introduce my fuel. No pressure is now, but the grain fuel flow is coming up. IDG is coming up at a nice slow rate. Once our NG is over 35%, I'm looking back at the ITT, which peaks out at 629. So, want to keep by the place I'm going today, I have not been in about two years. So, quite a while. If I remember correctly, it is a 9% slope on touchdown. Seemed pretty kind of the same all the way up. We'll go over the chart together when we get out of here. And they usually don't cut it very well. So we'll see how it is today when I get out there. Brook Tower, November Tango, Echo, request taxi, Wanakipa, one POV, copy, Mike Alpha Golf. Uh, November Tango, Echo, good morning. I have details only for November Tango Kilo, one keeper. Apologies, this is November Tango Kilo. And November Tango Kilo. Uh, back track 17 left and enough for one turn right, 20 is 1023. No additional traffic to my cup of golf. Wind is calm. 
1023, cleared to backtrack, 17 left, line up, 17 right, no, November Tango Echo. A correction, Kilo, I've just flown Echo too much. <laughs> I've been flying Echo for like the past two months, and that is it. This is the first time I've flown Kilo in literally Mike months. Mike traffic, number 10, Kilo Kodak, taxing this time. For one keeper, a departure going to try 1 to 1,000. Take up, it's back, Mike, also Kilo. Looks like we still have some low lining fog, things like that, but I'm still seeing through it and I think we'll be able to save VFR. In fact, I know we'll be able to save VFR getting out of here. We'll just make a quick climb out of here and get on top of everything. And once we're out of just this initial first stuff, all my ridges over here are nice and clear. Shouldn't have any issues getting over those ridges and on through the Woggy Valley. Ignition is on, inlet and lights are done. It's 20 degrees, so it's 1390 on the torque today. November Tango Echo, ready for departure. November Tango Kilo, ready oh, for the traffic, one to right, right then, clear for takeoff. November Tango Kilo, clear for takeoff, right turn. I'm saying November Tango Echo, man, I, like I said, I've flown it for months. Checklist is complete, 1390. I'll hold my brakes today. Alright, you up to 720 for the roll. Airspeed's alive. Up it up just a tiny bit more. There's our 50 and continuing rotating 56. Pitch up to 11, 12 degrees initially. We're looking for our 73 knots for our best angle of climb. Traffic wake of current current 1201. RTT back to 740. Look at that. Poker nose to this little cloud right here, and we're over. Oh, well, over 95, we'll go zero degrees of flaps. We are nice and clear now. Pitch for around 100 knots, we'll bring our Prop on back to 2,000 RPM. ITT settles in right around 720. That's what we want for our climb. Let's head over here to Flight Span, the app that we use. Kuroko Tower, November Tango, Kilo, departed time 13. We'll be initially tracking 285 on climb 1 2,000, estimating overhead Gurumbin 38. November Tango, Kilo. Well, in other videos I've shared with you guys this book that I made for you. It's a coffee table album with 40 locations that I go to here in Papua New Guinea. Want to keep it being one of those locations. You guys can see, man, it's a cool place. I hope to fly the drone around for you guys today so you guys can see as well. But if you guys like to pick one of these up, Got them on my website. I do international shipping on them as well. They've got culture. They've got a little bit of history on how these airships were built, why they were built, some of them. Even some pictures from when they were built back in the early 80s. So I think you guys will like it. Check it out. Orange day 1201, November Tango at Kilo Transfer. Almost did it again. November Tango Kilo, mostly good morning. Go ahead. Good morning, November Tango Kilo, uh, one eight miles to the west, maintaining uh, of Garoka, maintaining one two thousand, estimating overhead Garum and three seven, north of beam four three. November Tango Kilo, direct units one zero one zero. One zero one zero, and copy traffic, Mike Alpha Golf. November Tango Kilo, radio frequency secondary six five nine eight. Over Girambin, contact Hagen Tower, 120.5. Remain this frequency, Girambin, contact Hagen Tower, 120.5. Secondary 6598, no open, thank you, though. So, this location that we are going to be going to, looks like we have mountains all the way up to 9,600 feet, pretty close to it. Now it's on the highway, and there's a river going up this way. I'm guessing, I'm trying to think, there's that river. Wait a minute, you know what? 
There's a little tiny lake right there. I, I think I know exactly which lake that is. And let me quickly look on my screen again on my phone. Let's see if we can do satellite view. It's a river going up and it's off to the right side of that river. There's a high school there off down to the left. Now it's showing on this chart that there is a lake right there, but I'm not seeing the lake. Here's what's confusing to me, is the reports that I read online, it says that it covered up the main highway, which is the Highlands Highway. It's the only highway that we have here in Papua New Guinea. But on Google Earth, it's saying it's completely on the another side of a river. So I guess we'll figure it out once we get out there if it's actually over the main highway or if it's just over just a little dirt road that goes up to the village. I'm unclear. Unless they've just maybe mismarked on Google Earth the actual village, or maybe it's just the area, and that's what they that's what they called it for um, media purposes. Just approaching the edge of the airspace for Mount Hagen. Orsby, one two eight decimal five, November Tango Kilo transfer. November Tango Kilo, must be good morning. Reading your fives, go ahead. Good morning, November Tango Kilo, buyer gap this time, maintaining one two thousand, estimating one Akipa two four. November Tango Kilo, area Q one zero one zero. This uh, helicopter traffic by four operating between Wapenamanda and the landslide area around uh, Pogara area, Mulitaka. All operating uh, below one zero thousand. Copy traffic by four, November 10 Kilo. And Papa Hotel, Quebec, November 10 Kilo request. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to be flying overhead out that way. I was actually going to be looking for the landslide. Is it just to the uh, northwest of Wabag? Bravo, India, Bravo. I am uh, northwest of Wabag. Uh, 20 miles. All right, thanks. Okay, 20 miles north of Wabag. So it's actually further than what... Oh, the Wabag. Okay, yeah. So I was thinking it was closer to like, maybe like 12, 12 to 13 miles. Oh yeah, it is right around that river or that lake. So we'll start looking for that when we get a little bit closer, but there is four helicopters that is doing some shuttles back and forth. Number Tango Kilo, uh, coordinates uh, available. Uh, yeah, go ahead please, thank you. November Tango Kilo, the land sleep area, uh, at Mulitaka, coordinates uh, 0522 South, 14323 East. Many thanks, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo. 0522 South. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to, let's see, we'll just put it under temporary, and we're going to do lat long. All right, 0522 South. Two, two. It's not exact, but um, that's going to be hopefully close enough. And then east is 14323. Yeah, it's actually right where this school, remember we were looking at that, and it's right by that, so it is exactly where they were saying. User, let's see, come on down here. Recent, user two. There you go, and now if you guys want to fly to the same place on your flight sim, check it out. Now you have the coordinates. Let's go ahead and start our descent down there so we can uh, get a better look. Like I said, most of the terrain here is all around 8,000 to 8,500 feet. About two zero miles out, so I should be crossing Wabag. Yep, Wabag is right below me now. I've got 20 miles yet to go, so it does look like I'm gonna get there right where I would like to. Let's go down to 9,000, I believe. 
And then from that point on, once we see it, if we can find it, we'll actually remain at 9,000, 10,000, and probably be flying up the valley because you can see up there, there's quite a few clouds. Okay, we've got a, ho uh, a helicopter, uh, Papa Hotel Tango. Papa Hotel Tango, 1285, November Kilo. Yeah, November Tango Kilo, looks like I'm about seven miles behind you. Currently, at 11,300 on descent. I'll be looking for you guys. I'll stay well clear of your guys' operations, but um, just wanted to know where you guys will be landing when you guys are out um, near the landslide. I uh, have a uh, landing from that mall to the uh, east of the stop itself. We'll be uh, doing a few orbits and inspections of the stop before landing there. And we'll be shutting down on site. All right, I will stay north of your track. I got you on TCAS. I should probably be able to pass you up, but I'll be passing on your right side. Copy, thank you, Papa. Looks big and company. Okay, so that's Papa Hotel Quebec and Papa Hotel Tango. So that's the fourth. So those are the two. The other two, Defense 601 and Bravo Indo Bravo, are back there at Wapanamunda. I don't want to get in and involved with their operations because this is actually what they're supposed to be doing. This just happens to be on my way, and I want to show you guys. So to get around this cloud, I'll head off to the right just a little bit just so that I'm not involved with them. They are going to be landing just off to the east, he said, one mile. But I mean, I'm at 10,400 and the ground's not that much further down below me. I'd say 1,500, 1,800 feet below me. A really high terrain here for sure. He's 1,800 feet, so he's probably just about ready to land down in there. At Papa Hotel, Quebec and Company, Norman and Kilo. Are you the only two out here and the other two are at Wapatamunda? Uh, could be coming as far as I know, uh, the other two at Wapata Monday and we're the only two on site, but um, I can't guarantee that, obviously. Okay, I was only given four helicopters and I just wanted to, uh, that sounds right to me, so thank you. Thank you. Might be challenging getting into our next location. Looking ahead, there's quite a few clouds all through the valleys. Curious to know what the weather's going to be like once we get out to Wapit, or correction, uh, one. 500. Uh, okay, so he is heading right to that user waypoint, it looks like. I think it's just around this corner right here. I'm starting to see potential. And it looks like, okay, here's the river. This right here is Yumbala. Oh, and he's heading up over that way. I do see a bunch of excavators. Yeah, right here's the landslide. Man, for tragedy. And yeah, it does go right over top of the main highway. That's what I was confused because this is the village it said it was at, but it's just across the way. It goes right over top of the uh, thing, so, okay. And Papa Hotel, Quebec and Company, I've got you both in sight. I'm about two or three miles to the north of you, 8,000. I'll stay well clear, but I will be flying um, around just so I can get a video. Traffic, above you 11 o'clock, low, Copy. one yeah. mile. And so I think you should be watching. Traffic, 10 o'clock, low, one mile. All right, those are both yellow helicopters, which makes my life easy to see. Yeah, that's a big landslide. I mean, and a lot of, a lot of rock as well. The whole side of the mountain has just fallen off. And okay, they're both coming in to land down there, it looks like. Yeah, that is, that's too bad, man. That is too bad. Traffic, 9 o'clock, low, less than one mile. 500. There you go, wow. Yeah, the whole side of the mountain just completely just fell off. That's crazy. Well, there you go. I was interested to see what it was like too, so now you guys have 
a real story on exactly what it looks like. Hopefully all my cameras are working good today. <laughs> this would be the day, yeah, it looks like my wing is, so that's good. And Papa Hotel, Quebec and Company, another uh, Kilo is departing the area. That's a good one. Another 50 miles to go. We'll be uh, tracking down these valleys. Kind of scudgy clouds here and there with a nice high overcast. Should have no issues at all getting there. We'll see if there's any clouds in the circuit once we get there. I'm going to head over towards Yifki and fly down this river valley so that I can get a quick look at it. In case I cannot land at Wanakipa at the time being, I can go back over to Yifki and land there so that I can try it again maybe a little bit later on in the morning. Yeah, there's... There's a lot of clouds touching the ground. Makes my job much more difficult. Let's go over our strip chart before we get close. Like I said, I've not been here for two years. So touchdown elevation is 2,200 feet. We want 3,200 feet for pattern altitude. I'll turn that in now. We're going to be coming in this direction here. We're going to fly over, around, over this ridge line, and then enter into the circuit. And there's a couple ridge lines here, and I really don't want to turn early because I want to wait to the last one before I make my turn. Otherwise, I'll turn too early and then be coming at a weird angle. My go around point is the hill on final, and it's a hard left hand turn out. Looks like a 9% slope, pretty much the whole length of the runway. I hope they've cut it. And then if you scroll on down here, you can see it's just a really cool little place. If you guys are a flight simmer and you would like to fly this exact same route, I will post this on my Patreon page under the commercial tier if you guys would like to try this flight out. With this chart right here that I'm flying off of, with my little green tracks, you can see exactly where it is. Yifki circuit looks fairly open. I mean, base would probably have to be a little bit amended. There's a cloud right where I'd need to go. Coming all the way to the ground. It does look, yeah, it looks open enough for me to get in there if I had to, worst case scenario. I don't see the runway yet, because it's behind like a line. Oh, yeah, okay, I see it now. But I at least have that in my back pocket in case this does not work. But it is getting sunny. Get back to Mauhagen, all the way back to Garoka within an additional half hour. It's only like a six minute flight, so I could come all the way back to Yifty and come all the way back over here later this morning and still get back to Garoka with my VFR reserves because I. I want to keep a traffic, 1285, November Tango Kilo, 10 miles to the northeast, 4,500. It will be a circuit at time 25, want to keep a. Is this the valley that I'm going up? It's the main river. Let's go terrain on. No, it's not. See, that's a good thing I didn't go up that valley because that's just a dead end. This is where having terrain on is very helpful. When there's a lot of clouds, you can't see around the next corner. I don't like normally flying with it, and unless it's situations exactly like this. It's easy to see when you're up here, a couple thousand feet above the ground. You're like, oh yeah, you know, I can get around these valleys and all this stuff, it looks good. But when you get on the ground, it just looks like one continuous cloud. There's no differentiation between mountains and clouds. It's really hard to see how much visibility do I have clearance to get around the corner. So after you land, you really have to, for one, look really well before you land to go, yes, I can get out of here. The valley's super wide, super open. 500. Hey, it's up in this little valley here. I don't see it yet, but right where I'd be coming across on my downwind, it's completely packed in, but my whole base area in the beginning of my final is looking good. Let's go 10 degrees of flaps. VREF is set up. We'll do lights. If we have to go around, it's like the hill. 
Power up, 20 degrees, left hand turn out, resetting ITT, max ITT. We'll do this in a minute. I'm gonna go 20 degrees of flaps. 500. A little bit early. Okay, there it is. It's open. Yes. <laughs> My final is open. 500. Nice, okay. That is good, that is good. Yeah, without any clouds, although my go around, here's the hill here, go around is gonna have to be this hill here. So I'm gonna have to be really sure that I can make it in good because I'm gonna have to bring my committed area at that point on back another quarter of a mile because I won't have enough space to out climb these clouds or mountains. I'll stick my nose in as far as I can so I can make sure everything's looking good. They can hear me coming so that they can get off the runway if anybody's on it. Okay, runway looks good. Windsock is hanging limp. Looks cut. I don't see anybody on it. I want to be turning base 2900. 2960 now. A little bit further than normal. There's our 2900. We're slowing to 7700 or 77 knots. It's the last hill before I turn final. Things look good. We might have three knots of tailwind, maybe on landing, and I'm willing to accept that. Flaps. The cliff is complete. Going to 67 knots. Okay, we're coming up on committed. 500. Okay. I'm calling committed. Runway's clear as far as I can tell. A two knots of headwind. Three knots fast, slowing down. I match the slope before flaring and pulling power. Through a wind. Still two knots fast. Fifty on the descent, tiny bit shallow, but I'm willing to accept that. Yep, match the slope. Thank you guys for joining me on that flight over the landslide. I hope you guys did enjoy being able to see it yourself from the air. Maybe it's been able to help you answer any questions you might have. I don't have any information other than what you guys have, so thank you for joining me on this flight. If you're new here, go check out some other videos. I got a bunch of really fun flights for you guys. And if you missed at the beginning, Go check out my website. I've got a book here that covers a lot of these places. It's a coffee table album, and it has places like this place, Wana Kipa, in here. A lot of them have, like, history about things, how it was built, when it was built, the reason it was built, and things like that. So, thanks, guys. I'll see you guys next time.